नमस्कार आदाब सतरेगा और खुशा मदीद वेरी वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ पीपल दिस इज मास्टर डी जहर्ष जो कि हु इज गोइंग टू टॉक टुडे अबाउट स्टडिंग इन इटली एंड द ऑप्शन ऑफ स्टडिंग इन इटली हाउ गुड इट इज और हाउ ल्यूक्रेटिव इट इज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू नाउ लेट मी टेल यू दैट दिस द थमनेल विच इज रिटर्न हियर इज एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट एंड इट्स नॉट अ क्लिक बेटिश थमनेल रादर इनफैक्ट दिस इज वेरी मच पॉसिबल दैट यू कैन स्टडी योर एंटायर एम बी बी एस कंप्लीट एम बी बी एस इन इटली एंड एब्सोल्यूटली एट जीरो कॉस्ट येस इट हैपन्स सो नाउ लेट मी टेल यू दैट हाउ डज इट हैपन एंड इट्स नॉट ओनली वन सिंगल इंसिडेंट्स वेर यू कैन डू दिस इनफैक्ट देर आर मल्टीपल अपॉर्चुनिटीज वेर यू कैन स्टडी एब्सोल्यूटली फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट इन इटली ओके एंड इटली बींग अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल कंट्री अ यूरोपियन कंट्री कंप्लीटली वेरी डेवलप्ड कंट्री सो ऑल सच फैक्टर्स आर वेरी ल्यूक्रेटिव इन इन इटली एंड हेंस अ लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स particularly indian students are preferring italy as their mbbs or medical study destination okay so now let me tell you the entire details that what are the possibilities and and how you can do this so let's get into the video right now but before getting into the video if you have not subscribed to the channel kindly subscribe to the channel uh, so that you can uh, you can keep on getting the updates the all the information pdfs links all such important stuff here on the channel and on the telegram also okay both the links are given in the description box first of all now what is the problem of studying in india so studying in india is not a problem thing like in in fact it's very much possible but the biggest problem what most of the students do face in while studying in india is that first of all that number of medical colleges in india is 706 okay out of all this 706 and this is inclusive of government and private medical colleges out of the 706 colleges total seats are 1 lakh 8915 seats including government and medical seats now here roughly around 55000 seats are of government and remaining 53000 seats something of that sort are of private private medical colleges now how many students so even if i assume that everyone has money although the the sad part is that not everyone has money in fact there are a lot of students who are not even able to afford private medical college and hence they have to go for government medical college but for government medical colleges the the cut off is pretty high now 1 lakh 8000 seats are there out of which 23 lakh 33297 uh, students appeared for this examination in in 2024 last year this data was around 20 lakhs before that this data was much lesser so what i'm trying to say that every year the number of students are increasing massively but according to that the number of seats are not increasing that in that proportion so this is the first biggest challenge that even if i assume that everyone has got a seat all the medical colleges have filled their seat all the government colleges have filled their seat so still only 1 lakh student would be able to get an admission out of 23 lakh 33000 still 22 lakh more than 22 lakh students would be having no seats or no opportunity to study in any medical college in india that is a sad part and here comes the problem now moving forward the next sad part or the next problem is now say for example <clears throat> somehow if a student has managed to complete uh, like a neat examination and got something good but not that good that he can or she can land into a government medical college then what happens so government college fees is around 50 to 65000 rupees one uh, per year that means that for 6 years your fees would be in, in fact the courses of 5 years one year is internship so for that much period of time for 5 years your fees would be somewhere around like 50000 into 5 2.5 lakh rupees your entire uh, medical is complete even if i take for 6th year also it it is roughly 3 lakh rupees but now if you come to private medical colleges in india the sad part that here the minimum fees charged by any private medical college in india is around 7 lakh rupees for one year now if you multiply this with 6 it becomes 42 lakh rupees in indian rupees and if you go for a higher side it is above one year so now you can very well imagine that if a student is, has managed to be a little intelligent a little extra intelligent than the common masses still he has to fight this uh, entire net of private medical college and he has to do more better like much better if ha- if he has to land uh, into a government medical college so this is the problem that first students do not have this much money because most of the uh, people in india are not so rich that they can afford a fees of 20 lakh rupees per year for their stu- uh, for their kids to study in medical colleges they don't have that much money and the second problem which is the massive the like the biggest problem that we have 22 more than 22 lakh students will have no opportunities at all even if they have money 
So these two problem statements are being solved by this uh, studying in Italy option and that too uh, with a great infrastructure having already set in Italy. Now let me tell you the details about Italy. So first of all, this uh, data I have got from internet that at any given point in time, there are 1.5 lakh junior doctors who are unemployed. This is a data for uh, India, not, of, not for Italy. And the salary, even for those who are employed, who got, who got a job, they are getting a salary of 25,000 rupees to 30,000 rupees per month in India. This is again a very sad part. Now moving forward. So 95% uh, students national and international find a job in Italy after their post graduation in fields such as medicine, engineering and ICT. So this first part is showing that Italy has got a very strong job market. Now second, a doctor working in Italy will, uh, will typically earn around 112,000 euros per year and this can range from lowest average salary of 52,000 euros to the highest average of 1,75,000 euros. Now if I convert, when I converted this 52,000 euros to and 1,75,000 uh, euros, I got 46 lakh would be the minimum and the maximum would be 1.5 crore rupees per annum. This would be amounting in crores. This would be the salary of a doctor. I'm not saying private practice. Private practice would obviously have a higher benefit or a higher earning capacity. But this much amount you would be able to earn there. Now moving forward, what is the course duration in Italy? So these two data, like these two lines would be very sufficient to show you that Italy has got a strong job market. And at the same time, Italy has got a very strong paying uh, capacity of the people so that doctors are earning pretty well there. Okay. Now, MBBS in Italy has again the same methodology what we have in India, five years of study, one year of internship. Next is private universities and government universities, just like any other country, Italy also has the same setup. Public universities means government colleges, private universities means private colleges. Now the fees. So here, there also the for private colleges, the fees is on a higher side, five lakh rupees, comparatively a little lesser uh, compared to Indian ecosystem, but five lakh rupees to 17 lakh rupees. Now. Public universities do have 80,000 to 3.5 lakh rupees. So the first problem which is getting solved here that those people who do have money but they are not getting selected in NEET, they can actually have a chance here. First thing. Second thing, those students who do have, who do not have money but are talented, they can actually score scholarships and they can study absolutely free of cost in, in, in Italy. And I am going to tell you how, how is that possible or which scholarships are there. So there is a space for both type of students to accommodate their needs here. Okay. Now moving forward, living cost in Italy is student accommodation is somewhere around 25, uh, 250 euro to 300 euro, which converted to Indian rupees is around 20,000 to 25,000. Single person is around 34,000, including the bills and student shared is around 17,000 rupees. So roughly you can say 25,000 or max 30,000 rupees per month. And that would cost somewhere around like you can say 3 lakhs to 4 lakh rupees per annum would be required for you to stay in Italy. And which is very normal even this much amount is uh, ex uh, like required even if you go to some metro cities in India that much amount would be required by any of the student. Now moving forward you can do part time work in Italy like most of the international student do the same thing. So the average part time working hour permitted is 20 hours per week. And the average wages per hour which students in Italy do get is 7 euros per hour. So if converted 7 into 20 and then 50 uh, like average monthly wage which you can earn there is 50,000 rupees and converted to an, uh, one year wage is around 6 lakh rupees. So if you get 6 lakh rupees very easily you would be able to manage your living expenses because living expenses is around 3 lakhs to 4 lakhs maximum. So if you are able to get that 3 lakh rupees per month, uh, 3 lakh rupees per annum from your own working like your part-time working in Italy this means you would be very easily be able to stay in Italy without any hustle first thing sorted now let's talk about this uh, the tuition fees so here comes the MBBS scholarship so here most of the most of the universities do have scholarship programs so one scholarship is DSU scholarship which is being offered by University of Pisa now here you get a 100% tuition fees waiver if you get this scholarship, DSU scholarship, you get a 100% tuition fees waiver. Then you get a free accommodation. You don't need to pay for any accommodation. Your meals would be app, free meals at the university dining halls, so absolutely free of cost meals. Up to 6,500 euros for one year, which is 5.6 lakh rupees, merit-based grants allocated by the university. 
this means that the amount which you were getting if you would have worked on a part time that much amount would be given by the university itself as a grant like as a pocket money for you that some of expenditure some of the expenditures might not get covered in these three so for those expenditures you get this grant and this is completely merit based and need based so if you are not uh, that much uh, you know rich rich kind of thing then then you can submit your uh, income certificate papers your parents income certificate papers and they if they ver uh, once they verify it and if they find you eligible they will give you that uh, scholarship so students coming from non eu developing countries have to certify that they do not belong to a high income and high status family and then they will have this got it so this is the first scholarship second is again similar type of this is being given by university of rome so biomedical division of university of rome academic degree in medical and surgery scholarships so the name of scholarship is this here you get 100% tuition fees covered entire 6 years so you don't have to pay any rupee any single rupees for any of the year any of the semester and selection is based on financial requirements and the academic performance so most of the universities will find that these type of scholarships are there if you are able to land in any one of these scholarships your entire education is sorted and the rest part of staying in italy you have already covered that through your part time work cool got it now moving forward i have pointed few more scholarships but there are too many scholarships and all those scholarship details you'll get on this website okay so i have kept this website in this session's pdf also you'll get this session pdf on vedantu study abroad telegram channel uh, so you can download this pdf from there and then these links would also be clickable on that in that pdf okay so these links so any any scholarship you want to know more detail you can go to this website okay now moving forward what are the eligibility uh, eligibility criteria for uh international students to study in italy for mbbs so here please pay attention your age must be 17 years high school diploma with at least 50% uh, marks in physics chemistry biology so this requirement is also not that great but obviously you will not get selected at 50% you will have to score better but for indian students a valid neat score of at least 50% now this is a good part that they have not kept a very high uh, like benchmark it's only 50% like out of 720 uh, need paper is of 720 marks you need to get 360 marks that's it if you have got 360 marks they will consider your application cool now moving forward proof of english language that is ielts test that you need to take and then international medical as admission test imat is a test that needs to be taken by the students who are willing to go to italy now you might be thinking this imat uh, what is this imat test so imat test is uh completely similar to neat test neat examination but of a much easier level so here also you will get physics chemistry biology uh, like botany and zoology four papers would be there and the syllabus is almost the same but the toughness of the questions are comparatively much easier cool so this imat test i'm going i'm going to explain a little more so imat test has 60 questions all together 100 minutes of examination not even 2 hours english based examination pen and paper based examination omrc kind of thing here they will ask you questions from reading general knowledge logical reasoning like uh, picture perception test blood relations those those kind of things problems uh, and problems solving biology chemistry physics and mathematics so you can just imagine that they are asking so many things biology chemistry physics maths general knowledge logical reasoning and reading seven seven different uh, Uh, seven different uh, type of subjects and total 60 questions so like less than 10 questions per subject that's pretty easy easy so you'll have to just prepare for that marking scheme would be 1.5 marks per question so 1.5 points they say they don't say it marks so 1.5 points into 60 that's 90 marks of entire paper negative marking would be there and that would be minus 0.4 so 0.4 of 1.5 is is a little higher than 25% but the, but that's fine okay now moving forward what is the cut off for scholarship like this imat examination so what is the cut offs for uh, it's not for scholarship it's for entrance so you have to take this examination based on the score of imat examination you would be given admission to different universities so what are the cut off so these are the top universities of italy like la sapienza milano statel so these uh, these universities non eu seats are there and what are their cut off so non eu like 13 students are admitted from non eu countries so th for those 13 students they need to score 73.4 or above 
Similarly, 15 seats are here for this college. Pavia has 39 plus 1, 40 seats. So for 40 seats, the score, the cutoff has gone down. And to the lowest, it has gone to 61, even 56. Sorry, yes, 56 marks has uh, is the is for this college, uh, Cagliari. So Cagliari College has the lowest cutoff of 56 marks out of 90 marks, which you need to score to get into this college. I hope I am very clear that you what is the procedure that first of all you need to have all your documents. If you are not from a financially strong background, you can submit it uh, submit your application for scholarship. Then for you need to be 17 years of age 12th may you need to have above 50 percent marks need score of above 50 percent and then you need to take ielts or toefl and then you need to pass an imet examination in imet examination you can take a minimum of 60 marks would be required above 60 is better for better colleges so even if minimum 60 marks that is out of 90 you have to get 60 that is two-third of the marking and for this two-third of the marking the question paper level is comparatively very easier comparative to NEET examination. Cool. Now moving forward. That was all about this uh, studying in Italy opportunity. I guess I have covered most of the information, but still there would be a lot of information which I would not have touched. So if you need any further details, you can kindly write it down in the comment box. And if you need video on any other different uh, diversified topic, you can write down that also in the comment box. I'll be happy to make a video on that. Okay. With this, it's time to say a goodbye. See you all in the next session. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.